The Sidojo Mud Flow or Lapindo Mud is the result of an erupting mud volcano in the subdistrict of Porong, Sidojo and East Java, Indonesia that has been in eruption since May 2006. It is the biggest mud volcano in the world. Responsibility for it was credited to the blowout of a natural gas well drilled by P.T. Lapindo Brantas, although some scientists and company officials contend it was caused by a distant earthquake. At its peak Lucy spewed up to 180,000 ma cubed of mud per day. By mid-August 2011, mud was being discharged at a rate of 10,000 ma cubed per day, with 15 bubbles around its gushing point. This was a significant decline from the previous year, when mud was being discharged at a rate of 100,000 cubic meters per day with 320 bubbles around its gushing point. It is expected that the flow will continue for the next 25 to 30 years. Although the Sidojo mud flow has been contained by levees since November 2008, resultant floodings regularly disrupt local highways and villages, and further breakouts of mud are still possible. Geological setting, mud volcano systems are fairly common on Earth, and particularly in the Indonesian province of East Java. Beneath the island of Java is a half graben lying in the east-west direction, filled with overpressured marine carbonates and marine muds. It forms an inverted extensional basin which has been geologically active since the Paleogene epoch. The basin started to become overpressured during the Oligomiocene period. Some of the overpressured mud escapes to the surface to form mud volcanoes, which have been observed at Sonjiran Dome near Surakarta in central Java and near Parodadi City, 200 km west of Lusi. The East Java Basin contains a significant amount of oil and gas reserves, therefore the region is known as a major concession area for mineral exploration. The Porong Subdistrict, 14 km south of Sidojo City, is known in the mineral industry as the Brantas Production Sharing Contract, an area of approximately 7,250 kmas squared which consists of three oil and gas fields, one nut, carrot and tan gulangin. As of 2006, three companies a Euro Santos, Medco Energy and PT Lapindo Brantas a Euro had concession rights for this area. PT Lapindo Brantas acted as an operator. Mud Eruption Chronology on May 28, 2006, P.T. Lapindo Brantas targeted gas in the Kijin Formation Carbonates in the Brantas PSC area by drilling a borehole named the Banjar Panji 1 Exploration Well. In the first stage of drilling the drill string first went through a thick clay seam, then through sands, shales, volcanic debris and finally into permeable carbonate rocks. At this stage steel casing was installed in the borehole to help stabilize it. At 5 a.m. local time a second stage of drilling began and the drill string went deeper to about 2,834 m, this time without a protective casing, after which water, steam and a small amount of gas erupted at a location about 200 m southwest of the well. Two further eruptions occurred on the 2nd and the 3rd of June about 800 euro 1,000 m northwest of the well, but these stopped on June 5, 2006. During these eruptions, Hydrogen sulfide gas was released and local villagers observed hot mud, thought to be at a temperature of around 60 a degree Celsius. A magnitude 6.3 earthquake occurred in Yogyakarta at 6 o'clock local time May 27, 2006, approximately 250 kilometers southwest of Sidojo. Seven minutes after the earthquake a mud loss problem in the well was noted. After two major aftershocks, the well suffered a complete loss of circulation. A loss of circulation happens when drilling muda euro necessary for maintenance of well bestabilitia euro that is pumped down a shaft does not return to the surface but is lost into some opening or a fault system. This mud loss problem was finally stopped when loss circulation material was pumped into the well, a standard practice in drilling an oil and gas well. A day later the well suffered a a euro kicker euro unregistered trademark, an influx of formation fluid into the well bore. The kick appears to have been killed within three hours. The next day, on May 29, 2006, steam, water and mud began erupting up to 200 meters above the well, a phenomenon that is now known as the Lucy Mud Volcano. Hypotheses on the possible causes, the birth of Lucy was a major disaster for the population living nearby, 
with loss of their houses, properties and their livelihood. For the scientific community, however, it was a chance to study the evolving geological process of a mud volcano. In the past, mud volcanologists could only study existing or ancient mud volcanoes during dormant periods. Thus, Lucy is a rare occasion and a unique opportunity to conduct scientific experiments to further our understanding. It also offers opportunities to study the downhole condition of a mud volcano from the neighboring Banjar Panji exploration well lithologies. To explain what triggered the mud volcano, three hypotheses have been suggested, though none has one universal support hydrofracturing of the formation, fault reactivation, geothermal process equals hydrofracturing of the formation, hence a drilling related problem equals, from a model developed by geologists working in the UK, the drilling pipe penetrated the overpressured limestone, causing entrainment of mud by water. The influx of water to the well bore caused a hydrofracture, but the steam and water did not enter the borehole. They penetrated the surrounding overburden and pressured strata. The extra pressure formed fractures around the borehole that propagated one a euro two kilometers to the surface and emerged 200 m away from the well. The most likely cause of these hydraulic fractures was the unprotected drill string in the second stage of drilling. Though steel casing is used to protect the well bore in oil or gas exploration, this can only be applied in stages after each new section of the hole is drilled. See Drilling for Oil The relatively small distance, around 600 feet, between the Lucy Mud volcano and the well being drilled by Lapindo may not be a coincidence, as less than a day before the start of the mud flow the well suffered a kick. Their analysis suggests that the well has a low resistance to a kick. Similarly, an ESW crack in the surface in the drill site may be evidence of an underground blowout. The well may have suffered an underground blowout that resulted in a surface breach. Also, a likely contributor is the dissociation of methane hydrates. Equals fault reactivation, hence a seismic related natural event equals, the relatively close timing of the Yogyakarta earthquake. The problems of mud loss and kick in the well and the birth of the mud volcano continue to interest geoscientists. Was the mud volcano due to the same seismic event that triggered the earthquake? Geoscientists from Norway, Russia, France and Indonesia have suggested that a major fault nearby may have been reactivated, creating a mud flow path that caused Lucy. They have identified more than 10 naturally triggered mud volcanoes in the East Java province with at least five near the Watyukazek fault system, confirming that the region is prone to mud volcanism. They also showed that surface cracks surrounding Lucy predominantly run NESW, the direction of the Watyukazek fault. Increased seep activity in the mud volcanoes along the Watyukazek fault coincided with the May 27, 2006 seismic event. A major fault system may have been reactivated, resulting in the formation of a mud volcano equals geothermal process equals, Lucy is near the arc of volcanoes in Indonesia where geothermal activities are abundant. The nearest volcano, the Arjuno Well Iron Complex, is less than 15 kilometers away. The hot mud suggests that some form of geothermal heating from the nearby magmatic volcano may have been involved. The hot water and steam flowing from the vent. The location of Lucy near a magmatic volcano complex and its recharge system indicates that Lucy may be a geothermal phenomenon. Investigation equals cause equals. There was controversy as to what triggered the eruption and whether the event was a natural disaster or not. According to P.T. Lapindo Brandes it was the 2006 Yogyakarta earthquake that triggered the mud flow eruption, and not their drilling activities. Two days before the mud eruption, an earthquake of moment magnitude 6.3 hit the south coast of central Java and Yogyakarta provinces killing 6,234 people and leaving 1.5 million homeless. At a hearing before the parliamentary members, senior executives of PT Lapindo Brandt has argued that the earthquake was so powerful that it had reactivated previously inactive faults and also creating deep underground fractures, allowing the mud to breach the surface and that their company presence was coincidental, which should exempt them from paying compensation damage to the victims. If the cause of the incident is determined to be natural, 
then the government of Indonesia has the responsibility to cover the damage instead. This argument was also recurrently echoed by Abba Rizal Bakri, the Indonesian Minister of Welfare at that time, whose family firm controls the operator company PT Lapindo Brantas. However the UK team of geologists downplayed Lapindo's argument and concluded that the earthquake that occurred two days earlier is coincidental. While it could have generated a new fracture system and weakened strata surrounding the Banjar Panji 1 well, it could not have been the cause of the formation of the hydraulic fracture that created the main vent 200 m away from the borehole. Additionally there was no other mud volcano reported on Java after the earthquake and the main drilling site is 300 km away from the earthquake's epicenter. The intensity of the earthquake at the drilling site was estimated to have been only magnitude 2 on Richter scale, the same effect as a heavy truck passing over the area. In June 2008, a report released by British, American, Indonesian, and Australian scientists, concluded that the volcano was not a natural disaster, but the result of oil and gas drilling. Equals legal case equals, on June 5, 2006, Medco Energy sent a letter to PT Lapindo Brantas accusing them of breaching safety procedures during the drilling process. The letter further attributes gross negligence to the operator company for not equipping the well bore with steel safety encasing. Soon afterwards then Vice President Jusuf Kalla announced that PT Lapindo Brantas and the owner, the Bakri Group, would have to compensate thousands of victims affected by the mud flows. Criminal investigations were then initiated against several senior executives of the company because the drilling operation had put the lives of local people at risk. Abarizal Bakri frequently said that he is not involved in the company's operation and further distanced himself from the incident. Even in his capacity as Minister of Welfare, Abarizal Bakri was reluctant to visit the disaster site. Abarizal Bakri's family business group, Bakri Group, one of the owners of PT Lapindo Brantas, had been trying to distance themselves from the Lucy incident. Afraid of being held liable for the disaster, Bakri Group announced that they would sell PT Lapindo Brantas to an offshore company for only $2 but Indonesia's capital markets supervisory agency blocked the sale. A further attempt was made to try to sell to a company registered in the Virgin Islands, the Freehold Group, for one million US dollars, which was also halted by the government supervisory agency for being an invalid sale. Lapindo Brantas was asked to pay about 2.5 trillion rupee to the victims and about 1.3 trillion rupee as additional costs to stop the flow. Some analysts predict that the Bakri Group will pursue bankruptcy to avoid the cost of cleanup, which could amount to US$1 billion. On August 15, 2006, the East Java police seized the Banjar Panji 1 well to secure it for the court case. The Indonesian environmental watchdog, WALHI, meanwhile had filed a lawsuit against PT Lapindo Brantas, President Susilo Bambang Abvano, the Indonesian Minister of Energy the Indonesian Minister of Environmental Affairs and local officials. After investigations by independent experts, police had concluded the mud flow was an underground blowout, triggered by the drilling activity. It is further noted that steel encasing lining had not been used which could have prevented the disaster. Thirteen late Pindo Brantas executives and engineers faced 12 charges of violating Indonesian laws. Current status equals 2008 equals, as of October 30, 2008, the mud flow was still ongoing at a rate of 100,000 m3 per day. By mid-August 2011, mud was being discharged at a rate of 10,000 m3 per day, with 15 bubbles around its gushing point. One study found that the mud volcano was collapsing under its own weight, possibly beginning caldera formation. The researchers said the subsidence data could help determine how much of the local area will be affected by Lucy. Their research used GPS and satellite data recorded between June 2006 and September 2007 that showed the area affected by Lucy had subsided by between 5 and 14.5 meters per year. The scientists found that if Lucy continued to erupt for 3 to 10 years at the constant rates measured during 2007 then the central part of the volcano could subside by between 44 and 146 m. 
they proposed that the subsidence was due to the weight of mud and collapse of rock strata due to the excavation of mud from beneath the surface. Their study also found that while some parts of Sidojo were subsiding, others were rising suggesting that the Watukazek fault system had been reactivated because of the eruption. A study by a group of Indonesian geoscientists led by Bambang Astadi predicted the area affected by the mud flow over a 10-year period. The model simulated the mud flow and its likely outcome in order to find safe locations to relocate people and affected infrastructures. After new hot gas flows began to appear, workers started relocating families and some were injured in the process. The workers were taken to a local hospital to undergo treatment for severe burns. In Siring Bharat, 319 more families were been displaced and in Kelurahan Jatarajo, 262 new families were expected to be affected by the new flows of gas. Protesting families took to the streets demanding compensation which in turn added more delays to the already stressed detour road for Jalan Raya Porong and the the Porong Jempol Toll Road. The Indonesian government has stated that their heart is with the people. However the cabinet meeting on how to disperse compensation has been delayed until further notice. A local official Saiful Ala signed a statement announcing that, the government is going to defend the people of Siring. Following this announcement protests came to an end and traffic flow returned to normal an hour later. Stakeholder exit, the Australian oil and gas company Santos Limited was a minority partner in the venture until 2008. In December 2008, the company sold its 18% stake in the project to Minrak Labuan, the owner of Lapindo Brantes Incorporated. Labuan also received a payment from Santos of 22.5 million US dollars to support long-term mud management efforts. The amount was covered by existing provision for costs relating to the incident. Santos had provisioned for 79 million US dollars in costs associated with the disaster. Santos had stated in June 2006 that it maintained appropriate insurance coverage for these types of occurrences. Equals 2010 equals, new mud flow spots begun in April 2010, this time on Porong Highway, which is the main road linking Suraba with Probolinggo and islands to the east including Bali, despite roadway thickening and strengthening. A new highway is planned to replace this one however are held up by land acquisition issues. The main railway also runs by the area, which is in danger of explosions due to seepage of methane and ignition could come from something as simple as a tossed cigarette. As of June 2009, the residents had received less than 20% of the suggested compensation. By mid-2010, reimbursement payments for victims had not been fully settled, and legal action against the company had stalled. It is worth mentioning that the owner of the energy company, Abarizal Bakri was the coordinating minister for people's welfare at the time of the disaster, and is currently the chairman of Golkar, one of the most influential political parties in Indonesia. Equals 2011 equals, in 2011, Lapindo Brandt has published an independent social impact report. The Sidajara mud is rich in rock salt and has provided a source of income for the local residents who have been harvesting the salt for sale at the local market. Equals 2013 equals, in late 2013, international scientists who had been monitoring the situation were reported as saying that the eruption of mud at Sidojo was falling away quite rapidly and that the indications were that the eruption might cease by perhaps 2017, much earlier than previously estimated. The scientists noted that the system was losing pressure quite rapidly and had begun pulsing rather than maintaining a steady flow. The pulsing pattern, it was believed, was a clear sign that the geological forces driving the eruption were subsiding. Equals revived controversy equals, out of the three hypotheses on the cause of the Lucy Mud volcano, the hydrofracturing hypothesis appeared to be the one most debated. On October 23, 2008 a public relations agency in London, acting for one of the oil wells owners, started to widely publicize what it described as new facts on the origin of the Mud volcano which was subsequently presented at an American Association of Petroleum Geologists conference in Cape Town, South Africa on October 28, 2008. The assertion of the geologists and drillers from Energy Mega Posada was that at a recent Geological Society of London conference, 
we provided authoritative new facts that make it absolutely clear that drilling could not have been the trigger of LUSI. Other verbal reports of the conference in question indicated that the assertion was by no means accepted uncritically, and that when the novel data is published, it is certain to be scrutinized closely. In 2009, this well data was finally released and published in the Journal of Marine and Petroleum Geology for the scientific community uses by the geologists and drillers from Energy Mega Posada. It is a common practice in the oil and gas industry to closely guard their drilling and geologic information, and the company involved is no exception. After such release, however, future scientific research on Lucy should have access to a set of credible data and not be as constrained as early authors were with their limited and questionable quality of data to back their claims. After hearing the arguments from both sides for the cause of the Mard volcano at the American Association of Petroleum Geologists International Convention in Cape Town in October 2008, the vast majority of the conference session audience present voted in favor of the view that the Lucy mud flow had been induced by drilling. On the basis of the arguments presented, 42 out of the 74 scientists came to the conclusion that drilling was entirely responsible while 13 felt that a combination of drilling and earthquake activity was to blame. Only 3 thought that the earthquake was solely responsible, and 16 geoscientists believed that the evidence was inconclusive. The report of the debate and its outcomes was published in AAPG Explorer magazine. The article stated that the voting process was a decision by the moderator and only reflected opinions of a group of individuals in the session room at the time and in no way endorsed by the association. It further cautioned readers not to consider the voting result in any way as a scientific validation. On the possible trigger of Lucy Mard Volcano, a group of geologists and drilling engineers from the oil company countered the hydrofracturing hypothesis. They suggested that analysis based on the well data showed that the well was safe and pressure in the well bore was below the critical pressure. It is therefore unlikely that the well was fractured as charged. Their paper also published data and well information for the first time to the scientific communities as opinions and technical papers up to that time lacked accurate well data and were forced to rely on a number of assumptions. In February 2010, a group led by experts from Britain's Durham University said the new clues bolstered suspicions the catastrophe was caused by human error. In Journal Marine and Petroleum Geology, Professor Richard Davis, of the Center for Research into Earth Energy Systems, said that drillers, looking for gas nearby, had made a series of mistakes. They had overestimated the pressure the well could tolerate, and had not placed protective casing around a section of open well. Then, after failing to find any gas, they hauled the drill out while the hole was extremely unstable. By withdrawing the drill, they exposed the well hole to a kick from pressurized water and gas from surrounding rock formations. The result was a volcano-like inflow that the drillers tried in vain to stop. In the same Marine and Petroleum Geology journal, the group of geologists and drilling engineers refuted the allegation showing that the kick maximum pressure were too low to fracture the rock formation. The well pressure analysis based on credible data showed that the well is stronger than the maximum pressure exerted on the well. This implied that the hydrofracturing hypothesis is likely to be incorrect. They further stated that the model developed by Professor Davis is much too simplistic by not considering all the available data set and information in its analysis. The 2010 technical paper in this series of debate presents the first balanced overview on the anatomy of the Lucy Mard volcanic system with particular emphasis on the critical uncertainties and their influence on the disaster. It showed the differences in the two hypotheses the source of water and the current understanding on the subsurface geology below the Mard volcano. More geological field studies and analysis based on factual data need to be done before any conclusion can be deduced on what actually caused Lucy Mard volcano. In July 2013, Lupi al. proposed that the Lucy Mard eruption was the result of a natural event, triggered by a distant earthquake at Yogyakarta two days before. As a result, Cymic waves were geometrically focused at the Lucy site leading to mud and CO2 generation and a reactivation of the local Watukazek fault. According to their hypothesis the fault is linked to a deep hydrothermal system that feeds the eruption. Gallery References External links, 
Internet Portal for Lapindo's Victim, Bakri and Brothers Homepage, High Format Pictures of the Mud Volcano presented by the Boston Globe, Satellite Imagery and Google Earth KML Satellite Image Overlays by Crisp National University of Singapore, the EGU Newsletters, Issue March 19, 2007, Mud Volcano and Java, known locally as Lucy may continue to erupt for months and possibly years. Pages 5. Humanitis Sido Joe Funder Euro LUSI Research Library.